All right, so here we are, and I'm about ready to rack some electroforming solution to get it to filter. My part still hasn't come. There was this wine racking cane. Okay. And let me kind of tilt the camera so I can get a visual on this thing. Okay, so I've got this giant bottle. There's a straw, and it's kind of like a cane that goes down the center of it. And it's going to deposit a liquid into it. Okay, the liquid is stored in these tanks and they need to be filtered. They have not been filtered in quite some time. Uh, in the last episode, basically that cane had break, broke. And while I'm waiting for the next one to come, I've installed a new line. I chopped the end off of that and then I added that line onto it. So I'm going to kind of show you what this does. I covered this a long time ago, but I've definitely upgraded. Okay, so this is my outtake valve. This is my intake. So I can switch these on and off just with these little valves. So I'm going to, I want to suck liquid in, so I'm going to turn this one off and make sure this one's on. Okay, then I can take this hose right here and pretty much install it in any tank. I'm just going to do that and then I'll show you the install. I have that hose. Okay, leads down into the tank. And it's over in the corner. That way I can kind of tip this tank a little bit as it filters. Now when you do this, when working with pressure, any kind of pressure, even if it's like very, very low pressure, you know, like this is, imagine like squirting acid, okay? So you always wear goggles, glasses, gloves when working with this system. Uh, I got a couple pumps. I got a vacuum, one stage pump, okay? Its job is to get it into the bottle. And then I got this old airbrush pump and its job is to get it out of the bottle okay and again I have these valves too so if I want to let's say run this one okay I just make sure that one's on and this one's off so there's a hose that goes from the airbrush pump to a T and then the vacuum to the T and this goes to the bottle. Okay. So now, airbrush off, vacuum on. All right, let's see if we can't get this back up and running, right? I'm sure it's all plugged in. There we go, you can see it. There's the intake right there. And it's going around, shooting it into the bottle. So that's why I have to limit my size of my bath to about 3.5 gallons. It's a five gallon container. It's under really low pressure, but I wouldn't want to stress it out with four gallons. So that's my only bottleneck with my workflow, is if I ever want to go anything bigger, I'd have to figure that out. There's inline filtration. But to be honest with you, I'm not really pleased with inline filtration because the pump is always under, well, it always has a chemical in there that always seems to not want to stay in it. It always wants to burn out things. 
It always wants to eat certain types of plastic. And even though that it maybe is a, even a magnetic pump, I've had two of those magnetic pumps that were rated for acid fail on me. So I've, I've never had a really good pump that lasted a very long time when it came down to inline filtration. I do like this because, again, it takes it right out of here. And if I wanted to clean the containers out, I could. Cool. As it drains, you know, like everyone's like at the end, I just tip it just a little bit like that. And that's enough to get the rest out of the tank. All right, so I'm gonna let this fill up. And then I'll show you how to deposit it back in. So one of my questions came to mind, you know, like I try to interpret questions. And I would say, one of the questions I might have as a new person, do I need this? No. You do not need this. This is ridiculous. But it works out quite well. So if you were, let's say you were making enough jewelry for two consignments and four really, really big shows a year, okay? It is handy. You would benefit from it and you will reap the profit back from this system because you can just literally clean out your entire things, bam, start making uh, your next batch. I do this about every four batches and then I'll filter it. I don't have to polish anything because I don't have any kind of weird anomalies come, showing up on my Electroform goods. Um, I just have a lot of or a lot less problems because of it. So because of those no problems, I'm able to put out a high volume of material with little effort. So if you are interested in that, yeah, I would say it, it does come in handy. While you're filtering, you don't want air in here because it would already have air coming in, and then you would have more air coming in. So that volume of air, even though again, if it's under a low pressure like this, I would probably not want too much air in this. Oh, how much did it cost? How about that one? So for, you can get that pump, the vacuum pump, which is in the other video too. There's an older video if you look at my channel. I give you the model number and everything. I think altogether it's about $350 with all the parts. So basically, you know, these sell what, five rings, <laughs> six rings, something. Like I don't know. But I, I made my money back on it, that's for sure. So for a few pieces of jewelry, you can get a system that will double your output. All right, so it's almost done with this bottom half. I gotta do some acrobatics without the camera on, so I'll be back. So you're gonna get to this stage where you just turn the pump off. You can see that there was air being sucked in. So as soon as you hear that, that's when it's time to shut that pump off. It should be clear out of the filter too. If I page you up a little bit, so you can see that filter right there. And notice the liquid, it's about to that level right there. I don't like to keep it a lot of liquid in that, so I'll run the pump just for a couple extra seconds just to get that amount out. Because of the way the hoses are, Okay, see how it goes up into a curve and then another curve down? 
Because of that, liquid doesn't get trapped in the hose as much. It gets trapped more here, and that's where I want it. I don't want it being trapped into places. All right, so now we have to return it. Um, I do have to kind of uh, clean out the tub, and then I'll be back. All right, cleaning. I just want to show you this. It's a pretty neat system. Um, I have two tubs, okay? There's a tub within a tub for a reason. The first tub, the bigger tub, is to catch any crystals that might escape. Like, because this stuff has a horrible habit of growing outside your tank. If you are a new person to this, and you're still using the little tanks, you'll notice that even one drop of this stuff gets on something, it automatically starts growing in all directions um, and you don't you don't really want a bunch of copper sulfate growing everywhere to be honest with you so this tanks pretty neat because take this copper take the tank right out and I can clean the tank and then this tank goes back in there this pit right here I clean that maybe once a year. Um, this one, you know, I might clean that a little more often, that's for sure. I would say about four or five times a year. How do I clean it, right? Um, to be honest with you, I just use paper towel. <laughs> Low coat. Uh, you don't need much with this. I just take the little pill out rotation pill and then I, I just swab this down I find that's good enough and I don't have to like you know hose it down with any kind of water I don't have to do any kind of weird like chemical removal and worry about groundwater and all that good stuff copper sulfate I find a paper towel Pretty good. And this is why I keep plastic on all my surfaces in case during the cleanup process I spill some or I get some anywhere. I got all plastic countertops. Looks like a wasp got in there. Took the blue bath. What a death. All right, sweet. Put that back in. Um, you'll see that this gets quite a buildup on it. And in order to clean that off, I need steel wool. So never ever use this on this near this. Okay? Take this, the steel wool, and always clean any copper that you have outside. You do not and always wear a mask. There's no doubt about it. You do not want fine particles of copper sulfate in your lungs at all. All right, so there we go. I right, just install that back in. It goes through both tanks. And the reason for that is now I can attach this clip here. Because that clip is steel, I do not want steel in the tank. This sits outside the protected force field and steel never gets in the tank that way. And I do double ground it. So there's a clip that goes on the back side too. Just like that. Cool. Now I can mount the return valve in. So I just switch hoses. I've decided to make this middle tank my. Uh, 
kind of like my slough pit. <laughs> just, just for transitions. So I'm going to put this hose right back in. This one I do not mount at the bottom. I mount it at the top. So that it never goes under the water or under the liquid because it'll shoot a bunch of air in it and that could get pretty messy. There's no doubt about no 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 doubt about it. Alright. You gotta hear my furnace go. So I need to reverse this. I need to turn this one. So this one's off. This one's on. Now, air is going to go in here, fill this volume with air, push it back up into a return, and deposit it back into the tank. Now, in order to do that, I just have to reverse this. Just like that. So now the air is on and the vacuum is off. Nice. So I can turn this pump on. And there it goes. So it is a close monitoring system too. You don't want to just like do this and then walk away from it. During that time, you just clean up. So while that tank fills, um, that you can see this right here. You're probably wondering what this is. That's a giant rubber band that allows me to take and pull this over it and then tilt that down this way and then change out the filter. So that's what I use this tank for now. Is like if I want to change that filter, all I do is remove the rubber band, it tips down. I unscrew it and I change the filter out. Filters will last you a long time. There's no doubt about it, long time. Maybe one a year at best. So here's an extra filter, I'll show you what that looks like. Yeah, you can get these in your home improvement aisle. Um, just look for your water filtration aisle at your local hardware store. There is no micron value for these, I don't think. Um, it might be five, but basically you want the, ch the charcoal filtering ones. So you can hear that. You can see the air blowing through there. At this point, again, this is why you always wear glasses and goggles just in case. Because if that clip ever, the clip on the side of the tank right over here, if that was to ever go south, this would spray acid this way if that was to go south. Go. Nice clean tank now, that's emptied. This is back in here. Beautiful liquid. All right, so there's the liquid. Beautiful blue, nice shiny rod. No steel in the tank. This now 
gets unclipped and put back into my other tank. My, call it a slough pit for right now. I don't know what else to call it. Cool. Throw our pill back in there. Wiggle my magnetic thing around. Nah, that has to all be plugged back in. So, other than that, that's it. Just want to take you on that journey of how I clean my tanks. Hope you enjoyed.